everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Morning's End Part 1 quest. Now, for this quest you need the following requirements. So you need to have completed Big Chompy Bird Hunting, Sheep Herder, and the Roving Elves quest. You'll also need level 60 ranged and level 50 thieving. And you'll also need to be able to defeat a level uh, 79 or 86 mourner as well. That's it for requirements, now onto the items. So a lot of these items you can obtain quite easily during the quest, however, um, I would recommend bringing the main majority of them with you just to sort of speed it up for yourself. So you will need one piece of bear fur, two pieces of silk, blue, red, yellow and green dye, um, and it's advised to bring multiples of these, um, I've got four of each and I'll explain why a bit later on, a bucket of water and a feather, a piece of leather, toad crunchies, uh, pre-made ones will work too so you can buy them off the grand exchange, uh, one magic log, uh, one rotten apple, however I uh, made a mistake and brought the wrong thing, a uh, rotten tomato, but you can actually wait till that area where you need it to get one so don't worry about that too much. Um, Ogre Bellows if you did happen to keep them in your um, bank from uh, completing the big chompy bird hunting quest if not I can tell you how to go about uh, re-obtaining them and the big book of bangs which if it isn't in your bank uh, you can re-obtain from uh, a bookcase in your player own house. And you will also need 10 to 20 pieces of coal or more. Um, now obviously I've only got them noted at the moment. There's a, a particular part where you will need them. So I'll make sure I tell you just before. So don't worry about bringing those with you at this very moment. So that's it for the requirements and items, now onto the quest itself. So I'll just give you the heads up, this quest is quite a long quest, there's a few different bits to do so it will take you a little bit of time, obviously um, if you need to log out at any point during it then just sort of remember what bit you got up to. Um, but to start the quest we need to speak to Eluned who can be found in Isfadar. So she'll be either at the just east of the Tyrus camp in a secluded spot um, or be southeast of the Adamantite mine near a couple of magic trees. Um, and as before, um, she will swap locations sort of every five minutes. So I would recommend going to the um, area that is southeast of the Adamantite mine. So we are currently at the Elven Lodestone, which you should have activated during like the Regicide quests and all those other previous elf related quests. Um, and then we're going to head over to the section uh, now. Um, you'll bear in mind there is a leaf um, trap that you need to jump over at this bit here and then when you cross over there's a bit of a trip wire that you need to make sure you step over. When you're then at the bit with the wolves if you head directly south um, to where the magic trees are this is where the elves will appear um, sort of every five minutes or so. So if they're not here straight away just sort of hang around for a few minutes and eventually they'll appear. So once uh, Eluned and Ilswin have appeared, you want to speak to her and she will inform you that Eriwin, um, who you met last in front of King Lafs's castle, wishes to speak to you in Lelieta, um, or Lelita, however you pronounce it, <laughs> um, before offering to take you there. Uh, she will then lead you to an elven village and gives you a teleport crystal with a few charges, which will allow you to return here with ease in any time uh, in the future. She's not as skilled as the elf who originally sung the crystal though, so therefore you'll need to have to see to have it recharge when it does run out of charges and um, you can do that by going to the same spot where we just sort of started the quest and wait for her to appear and ask her to recharge it. So uh, Eluned will then leave you with Aaron Wynn and you want to speak to him. So Arian Wynn is glad to see you and reports that there is an increasing number of mourners crossing the Aranda Pass and when you are confused as to what the Ardone Plague healers would be doing, he explains that they are really elves from Prifidinus in disguise and that Lathus is making everyone think they are healing the plague. So since the elves have been unable to sneak into West Ardone due to being recognised by the mourners, um, it is your mission to infiltrate their ranks and find out what they are up to. However, as he has no idea how to do so and suggests she form a plan starting with the fact that there are mourners at Arandar. So you want to make your way to Arandar so you can either do so by sort of heading to the entrance on the Kandarin side or exiting uh, the Elven Forest and head to the northern side of uh, the Elven Forest to reach it. I would personally recommend doing it from the Kandarin side though. So the best way to get to the uh, Arandar Pass is to teleport to the Eagle's Peak Lodestone via the Lodestone Network and then head directly south from there to where in the direction of where the outpost is and sort of going off at a tangent you'll see these big gates that give you the access to Aranda Pass and you'll want to go through there. So 
So when you're in the pass, you will notice that there are mourners periodically walking eastwards through the pass. Um, so what we need to do is dispatch one of these mourners in order to obtain their um, equipment in order to go under disguise. So uh, if you want to attack one of the mourners, they're not very powerful and can be quite easy to dispatch, so you shouldn't have much challenge there. The mourners will drop a full set of mourner gear consisting of a gas mask, a top, trousers, boots, gloves and a cape. In addition, a letter of recommendation from Prifidinus. Unfortunately, as you collect all the items, you'll accidentally rip the trousers and make a blood stain on the mourner top and obviously you need to repair these before infiltrating the mourner base. So, to remove the stains from the bloody mourner top, you want to go to Tavoli, which I would do via the Tavoli Lowstone, and then you want to go talk to Tigid, who is the druid doing his laundry in the lake, which is just southwest of the pet shop and southeast of the Lowstone. So, um, talk to him and he'll tell you about a special soap that can remove any stain, but he will not let you have, as he does not have much left in stock. Or if you've completed the Edgar's Ruse quest before, he'll still be angry with you taking his dirty robes. Um, but you want to proceed to steal the soap from his basket. Then using that and a bucket of water, you'll wash the bloodstains out of the mourner top, which you'll now be able to wear from now on. So, to fix the trousers, we need to go back to the lecher and talk to Oranwen, who is the seamstress located in the Northwest Pass. So, um, if you use your uh, crystal seed that you got given near the beginning of the quest, you'll teleport straight back to there, uh, and you'll find her in the Northwest part of the town. So, she'll be able to mend them if you bring her two pieces of silk and one bear fur, which you should have uh, with you. She will then take the trousers to mend and in one minute they'll be ready to be collected. So um, obviously just sort of wait round there for one minute. If you try and ask before, she'll say they're still being done. Um, if you don't happen to have any of your dyes, you can buy them from her um, while you're waiting for her to mend the trousers. After the minute has passed and you've spoken to her, she should return the trousers. And now you'll have the full mourner gear ready to wear and head into the base. So for the next part we need to head to the mourner's base and we must make sure we're only wearing the mourner gear as even if you're wearing any, even if you're wearing the full mourner gear and have like a weapon wielded they won't let you in um, so I would uh, recommend just putting stuff in the bank um, that you're not going to need um, such as weapons and armour. So, like I said, wearing only the mourner suit, make your way to the mourner's headquarters. So the quickest way to get to there is to teleport to Ardone Lodestone via the Lodestone network. Then head to the gates of West Ardone, and then you'll find the uh, headquarters in the northeastern part of West Ardone, where you had poison their stew earlier in the uh, previous quest. Enter the building and then climb down through the trapdoor, and you'll find yourself in an underground base with several patrolling mourners. You want to locate the head mourner uh, in his office and speak to him. So the head mourner will take your letter of recommendation and welcome you to the death guard. He'll tell you that the mourner's job is to keep people believing in the plague. Ask for more of an explanation and he will reveal that the mourners have died Farmer Brumpty's sheep, making them think they have fallen ill with the plague, which in turn prompted the Ardone City Council to request you in help uh, dealing with them. However, the colour is starting to wash away from the sheep and you are required to reapply the dye to keep up the hoax, making sure to use the correct colours on the respective sheep. Now normally they would use a no made device that would fire the parcels but they've run out and the device is broken and the head mourner will give you the broken device and the tarnished key to open the cell where a gnome inventor is being held for torture. So you want to use the key to enter the cell and speak to the gnome on the rack and unsurprisingly he refuses to repair the device and states that no form of torture will make him cooperate. If you go through some different dialogue with him, it will come up that he's uh, had all these different things uh, done to him. Um, he played Gnome Ball as a child, um, but he accidentally discloses that he hates having his feet tickled and loves toad crunchies. So you want to use the feather in your inventory on him to tickle his feet, which he'll beg you to stop. What you then want to do is um, use the feather on him again, but this time your character will also hold the crunchies just out of his reach, and this time he'll succumb and agree to fix the device if you bring him some leather and a magic log. So once you have uh, those two items in your inventory, you should hopefully already have them, speak to him um, again and agree to release him. Uh, the gnome may disappear at first, but he will uh, reappear if you sort of go back up the ladder and down, it's just a little bug that can happen. Um, after the um, gnome has been released from the uh, torture device, uh, speak to him and he'll repair uh, the device for you. Like with the trousers though, you will have to wait a minute or so for him to finish fixing the device. 
When the time has passed, you've spoken to him again, the gnome will give you the fixed device, but will tell you that you still need to find replacements for the fat green parcels that you need to fire. So, we now need to go uh, to Feldip Hills um, to go and obtain our ammo, and this will be the bit where we can also get the Ogre Bellows if you didn't have them uh, with you previously. So, travel to the Yanil Lodestone via the Lodestone Network, and then from here, keep heading south. Um, now, if you do need the Ogre Bellows, you'll see the uh, cave that you went in during the big chompy bird hunting quest over in this area here, uh, and you can search the chest in there to obtain the Ogre Bellows. Um, so what you need to do now is like you did a big chompy bird hunt in uh, quest you obviously use the bellows to um, obtain the different toads but what you need to do is uh, first load your ogre bellows um, with a bottle of dye of a certain color so obviously you've got blue red green and yellow so after you fill your bellows with uh, a relevant dye, you then want to use the bellows on one of the toads and it will inflate them into an inventory and also turn them into the colour. So if you use red dye, it will turn it into a red toad. Um, so you want to repeat this process for all four of the different types of dyes until you've got all the toads in inventory and hopefully some of you have brought uh, multiple dyes with you. So just basically make sure that you've got um, enough of each coloured uh, toad for the next part as it is possible to sort of make a mistake during this next bit um, and I'll speak to you when you've done that. So once you have a variety of all four toads, blue, red, green and yellow, you then want to make your way to the fields north of East Ardone, right near where the Ardone lodestone is so you can teleport to there. So there are four sets of sheep, pale red, pale blue, pale green and pale yellow with three sheep in each set. So what you want to do is stand a few steps away from the sheep uh, and obviously you'll be able to tell which colour it is but you can examine if you're not sure. Uh, and then what you need to do is use the corresponding coloured toads on the fixed launcher and obviously fire them at the sheep. So what you need to do is obviously put the relevant toad in your uh, launcher before equipping it uh, and then right click the fixed device when you are wielding it and use the fire option and it will come up a little interface and you have to use the arrows to aim it at a sheep and then press the middle fire button once it is in the middle of the screen. Only one sheep needs to be dyed uh, per set so once you dye one sheep the rest of them will turn uh, to a different colour as well. Now the only tip I have for this is make sure to only fire at a sheep if it is exactly in the middle of the screen otherwise you may lose your toad and also um, if the sheep has been in that spot for a few seconds don't risk firing it as the sheep do move around quite quickly so you kind of want to make sure that you're sort of staying close to a target of one sheep and as soon as it stops and you're pretty much bang on the middle fire straight away before it has a chance to walk away. Now if for some reason your device crosshairs are not centred in your game window, choosing a different load layout from the option menu uh, will help uh, as there is a bug that can cause the crosshairs to be displayed in the wrong location. So if that does happen to be the issue, just um, try a different um, layout uh, interface for your screen just to make sure that doesn't happen. But obviously this is the reason why I said to bring uh, several coloured toads with you as it is quite easy to miss the sheep, especially if you fire and it decides to walk away just as you fire the toad at it. Um, but as long as you sort of take your time and don't rush it, you will be able to complete this bit relatively quickly. And obviously worse comes to the worst, if you use up all your different uh, toads uh, and you still need to colour some sheep, just obviously return back to Feldup Hills and um, obtain some more toads, however you will need more dyes in order to turn the toes into a different colour. But for the groups of sheep, you'll find the red sheep just near the um, Ardone Lodestone, then the green sheep are a little bit north from uh, the red ones, again the yellow ones are a little bit north from the green ones, and then the blue ones are more on the western side. So if you go west, sort of, of the fishing gills, you'll see the blue sheep around the area with all of, like the um, warrior women and uh, enemies like that. So once you have um, recolored all the sick looking sheep, you then want to return to the head mourner in the mourner's base. So I'll speak to you in a moment. So he will praise your enthusiasm and provide you with another task to ensure that a couple of people fall victim to the plague to maintain the hoax. And he will tell you that someone recently poisoned the mourner's stew which gave them plague-like symptoms. And he asks you to find out what this substance was so you can use it on the citizens of West Ardine. That way they become ill and can be taken to the headquarters to work as slaves for the mourners. 
So the poison should be easy to distribute as the food comes from three supply points in the city walls and you'll need to poison two of these. Now if you don't have one in your inventory already, like I said at the beginning part of the quest, you need to obtain a rotten apple. Um, so if you go back upstairs and outside the west of the building, it is along the fence by the Death Guard headquarters. So you should see one on the floor, make sure you pick that up. So for the next part, we need to go and speak to Eleanor, who obviously uh, helped us in the previous quest, and she lives slightly northeast of Ardone Castle. She will initially mistake you for a mourner, but you will reveal your identity, and you tell her that you need to make a poison based on the rotten apple, and describe how you used one to poison the mourners before. So, um, she'll ask for an explanation, and you'll give her a summary of events that took place since you last saw her, and she'll agree to help you on the condition that the toxin is not lethal. She asks for a summary of the apple so she can make an antidote so um, obviously give the rotten apple that you collected earlier to Eleanor for her to examine and a few minutes later speak to her again and she will have found that the toxin is um, due to the mold um, and obviously large quantities will be needed to poison the city's supply. So to produce the toxin, what you will need to do is mash up a load of rotten apples, then dissolve it using a liquid, and then strain out uh, the liquid, and then use heat to evaporate the liquid, which will leave you with just a white powder, which will be your toxin, and you're given a sieve to help with this. So one of the main things we will need in order to do this is to um, create a bowel of naptar which we did in the regicide quest where we used the um, distillation machine at the chemist. Um, so I will talk you through that again. However, first thing we need to do is get the apple mush. So as Eleanor suggested, go to the fenced in apple orchard which is northwest of her house and south of the tree gnome stronghold. So, when you arrive there, use one of the barrels on the pile of rotten apples, um, and the barrels obviously spawn just nearby, and you'll get a barrel of rotten apples. You then want to use this on the apple barrel machine, just northwest of the pile to mash them up. You'll now have an apple barrel mashed. You then want to pick up at least one more empty barrel to create your naftar in, and bring the other empty barrel with you. So in order to make our naftar, we have to do what we did during the regicide quest. So first off, with the empty barrel, we want to return to uh, the uh, elven lodestone via the lodestone network, and then head south to where the poison waste is. From there, you now want to fill your barrel with the coal tar, which you will now need to distill to turn it into naphtar, and it is advisable to fill another one of these as backup if you're not feeling confident, um, but obviously the process to turn it into naphtar is exactly the same in the regicide quest. If you found that quite easy, you shouldn't struggle with this bit. This is also the bit that you're going to need a lot of your coal, so make sure you do um, take this out of your uh, bank if need be. Um, so what we need to do is go to the um, fractionation still in Rimmington, uh, near where the chemist's house was. So the um, quickest way to get there is to go to Port Surim Lodestone, then head west to uh, Rimmington. But obviously if you do need to stop off at the bank to get your coal, do that first. So once you've um, got to Remington, you'll see the chemist's house here and you'll see the um, fractionation still just outside the house. What you want to do is use your barrel of coal tar on the still, which is located outside his house. Uh, and to get a barrel of naphtha, we need to use the same methods uh, that we did for regicide. So um, if you are sort of um, following this guy as you do the quest yourself, I wouldn't do this bit until you've watched this little talk through. Even though I do explain it in the regicide quest, I will explain it again just to make sure you don't mess it up. So once you interact with the um, fractional steel, it will come up with a little interface and you've got all these different things and the idea is to keep the heat within the specific range while the green bar gradually fills. So what you must do is rotate the tar regulator clockwise twice to make the tar flow at maximum. The pressure indicator on the left should then go up. When the pressure enters the green region, rotate the pressure valve clockwise once to let out some pressure and this should then stall the indicator on uh, the green bit. What you then want to do is start adding coal but do this slowly as this raises the heat indicator on the right. Uh, if it's below the green region, add a bit more coal and if it's above, don't add coal until it gets lower. 
So as long as the heat doesn't reach the very end part of the dark orange portion, you won't spoil your compound. Um, so it's better to sort of like let the temperature drop down a bit and add another coal to bump it back up. If you spam click the add coal button, um, the heat thing will go out of control and you'll then ruin your uh, tar and have to start again with a new one. But as long as you're monitoring the um, heat uh, needle and keeping it within the green region, you'll see the green bar start to fill up. And once the green bar is full, everything should sort of reset on the interface and your naphtar will be ready. And you just need to simply exit the interface to receive it. Obviously in your inventory it should show you as um, naphtar if it's showing anything else and obviously you've done that bit wrong and you'll have to go and obtain another barrel of coal tar from the elven poison waste in order to do it again. But as long as you go through that you should be fine and you guys would have had to done that for the regicide quest so it's not like it's completely new to you. So what you now need to do is use the naphtha to dissolve your mashed apples. Next you want to strain the naphtha apple mix using your sieve to obtain a solution of toxic naphtha. Finally you want to evaporate this by heating the mixture on a cooking range. Do not do it on an open fire as this will explode uh, and you'll have to start over from scratch. But you'll find there's a range in the most northeastern house in Remington that you can use. If you've then done this correctly you'll be left with two white heaps of toxic powder and we just need this for the sort of final part. So what we now need to do is return to West Ardone in order to poison the food supplies and you're also going to need to make sure you've got your mourner's gear on with you to be able to uh, complete the quest as you need to speak to the head mourner again. But first thing we need to do is return to West Ardone, so I'll speak to you when you're there. Once you're in West Ardone, you need to um, put the toxin in two of the three food supplies in West Ardone. The supply po um, points are in forms of sacks of grain, and they can be found outside the general store in the southwest, cor uh, southwest corner of Ar West Ardone, upstairs in the Ardone Church, or uh, in the civic office um, just nearby. It doesn't matter which two you choose as long as you use two. I would use the ones closest to each other, which is obviously the um, church, obviously on the top floor of there and also in the civic office which is just opposite. Once you have um, put the uh, toxins in both these food spots you then need to return to the head mourner in the headquarters. So he will be content and remark that the slave pens will soon be full again. You will ask what the slaves are needed for and he will tell you about the mourner's recent discovery stating that you have proven yourself worthy. He reveals that soon after the Death Guard had taken control of West Sardone they found out about a legendary power source. And using the slaves taken from the city have begun to dig towards it. However a constant supply of slaves is required due to the powerful beasts that are slaughtering them every day. According to the head mourner, a book spoke of an ancient temple built by the early elves around the altar and acquiring this power will speed up the Dark Lord's return. The mourner will mention that he has another task for you but you're not able to receive it yet because the locksmith is copying the key for the door to the excavation site and therefore he orders you to report in regularly until they return. And then after that it will come up with congratulations you have completed Morning's End Part 1. You're awarded 2 quest points, 25,000 constitution and thieving experience, access to the Death Guard headquarters and the village of Leletta, crystal teleport seed, full mourner gear, 2 treasure and a keys and 2 hearts of ice. So there we go, quest complete. So overall, quite a lengthy quest. There's a few different things to do. Like it's not difficult in the fact you have to fight anything, but obviously all the different activities you have to complete. Uh, and overall, the rewards for it aren't exactly fantastic. The XP is pretty good, and obviously having access to uh, Lilietta is quite handy, as um, obviously that just speeds up sort of um, getting to and from the Elven sort of forest. And also, um, there's a lot of things in Lilietta which you can use, but obviously I'll let you guys sort of discover that for yourselves. The main reason most of you will be completing this quest though is in order to do the sequel quest, Morning's End Part 2, which is even more longer and even more difficult, so I'll look forward to trying to talk you guys through that one. <laughs> um, but as for this guide, I don't think you'll run into any problems at all, however if you do get stuck, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best as I can. If not, thank you for watching, please make sure you like, favourite, comment, subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Thanks everyone, bye bye.